So I can't do OPGG for this one because it's Singapore server and they don't have OPGG there on uh, Garena and I don't really know any servers, but we're, we're watching catch in six packs. So I'll, let's see, we're running catch in six packs. Where is he? Lissandra. So Thunderlords is cool. We're playing Lissandra mid. Not the greatest in this meta, but she's fine. She's definitely fine. I think you said something about. What did you? Say? You said something that I was that I wanted to ask about. Yeah, you typically play any cast Talon. Those all three of those champions are perfectly fine. Those are the only three champions you need to play. And then after that, you say, "But I'm quite flex flexible with my mid lane champion pool. You, you did really well with Alessandra, Blah 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 blah. But so, what that tells me, I, I can't see your OPG. Obviously, because you're on Garena, but what that's telling me is we're trying to pick champions too much to counter pick, like, a, or, or I don't, I'm not sure what we're doing, but I'm not sure why we aren't just sticking with if we're if we're if we're playing Annie Cassidy and Talon, why don't we just stick with Annie Cassidy and Talon and not play anyone else, right? Like those three champions, they can fit pretty much any situation that we need. Uh, Cassidy's late game scaling. Talon is early game roaming assassin, and Annie is just a team fight mage, more or less, who who has a pretty safe lane. I don't know why we need to throw champions like Lissandra in when we're when we're playing those three champions, and they fit mostly any situation that we need. So that's the only, that's the only. It was kind of questionable what we were saying about our mid lane pool being flexible, and I kind of wish we could see our OPGG because I think what that means is. We're probably going to be playing things like Lissandra, and maybe we'll throw in like random champions that maybe they're counter picks, but if we don't play them a ton, they aren't counter picks. And I'm not actually sure with this website, League of Asia. Expected downtime due to site upgrades. Yeah, it's not up right now. But, like, even even if we're playing, like, Lissandra into Zed, like, yeah, that's supposed to be a pretty good matchup, but if we don't know how to play Lissandra, I'm not, I'm not actually sure if Lissandra is a TF counter pick or not, or if you just felt like playing Lissandra this game or what, but we gotta, I think just... You're better off sticking to comfort rather than looking for counter picks, and that's something I see in low elo a lot. Like, oh no, this person counters this person. I have to pick this person, right? Where y people aren't really playing the matchups to the highest potential, so counters don't really matter that much. Like sometimes, sometimes there's going to be pretty hard counters for sure, and sometimes that'll suck. But a lot of the time, you're just way better off playing what you're 100% comfortable with. And playing it well rather than trying to. I don't know what this guy's doing. But ra rather than playing, trying to play a counter pick and just playing it poorly and then not even knowing why the counter, or not even playing towards the conditions that the, cha the champion counters them. So, like I said, I'm not sure if that's the situation we're playing for, but I see that a lot in lower elos and it's just it's questionable because you're way better off playing what you're comfortable on. Like if you wanted to, you could you could honestly just one trick Talon and and climb, or you could one trick Cassidy and climb, or you could one trick Annie and climb, and do, and do pretty fine with it. Like you don't need a ton of different champions to play, unless you unless you're playing them just because you find them fun or, or or whatnot. But if we're looking to climb, it's it's usually better to stick to as few champions as possible because you'll you'll get more more and more and more comfortable on those champions. But yeah, it's just, I'm not sure why we wouldn't want to pick something like Talon against TF. Like, what, what's wrong with picking Talon in this game? Unless it's banned or something. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand the issue of picking Talon. Because he can semi-match the TF realms because he roams down to bot and top pretty quickly. He has a way better early game than, than TF does. Like, he can punish him. Like, as early as level 2, he can punish him. Where 
in this matchup, you're just going to be getting, you're just going to be wave clearing, and he's just going to outroam you post level six. Because what are you going to do when he walks up towards here, right? Are you going to, are you going to match the roam? He's going to get there a lot quicker, and he's going to make his impact a lot quicker. Where, what, what are you going to do? Sit mid and, and clear waves? Like, I'm just, I'm not sure about the Lissandra pick. And if we want to pick it, it's fine. We can definitely, we can definitely still do well with it, but. The pressure that we have versus TF early, like pretty much what we're going to be doing is having a lot of team fight pressure. We don't have a ton of pressure versus him early. Like we can poke him down like this, but he has a, he has a he has potions, so he's not going to be doing he's not going to be hurting too much from our poke. Yeah, clear the wave as fast as possible. We probably want to be building towards uh, Roa. And there it is, cool. Nice, well played. I, I really like that. Yeah, he's being way too greedy. Your jungler's around over the wall. Ult him. Cool. Yeah, perfect. And then clear waves. Push it in. Back. Capitalize on your gold lead. You can probably buy Blasting Wand at least. Blasting Wand, yeah. Cool. Considering going towards the the GLP, which it's not terrible. I think we're just better off going Roa and just winning the scaling game versus him. And then just being being a beast in team fights, pretty much. Okay, well played. Push it in. Take tower. What do you no? Take tower. At least hit it. Because TF's just up right now, so he's going to be right about here. So you can clear one more wave at the very least. You weren't in any imminent danger. So the, what, the very least that you can do is wait for this wave to crash in, clear it, and then, and then back. Finish our Roa though, that's cool. Tanked like two more tower shots than we needed to. Flash there. We took kind of. I mean, I get. I get why we took that route. I mean, it didn't end up working out for us, but we were scared of the Garen. We're still in tower range, though, is the thing. Where we have to get out of tower range. Like we have to go walk like all the way up here and then get out. Right? It's pretty. It's pretty bad, regardless. He, he like he's probably gonna get us regardless, but he's definitely gonna get us if we take an extra two tower shot. Shut Why not just alter right now? Why do we wait so long to alter? Like, what, what's what's the point of this E? I'm just... We want to alt lane as soon as possible so that we can get a ton of follow-up damage. Like, if you alter, then Lucian can ult. Like, he might not, but if you just altered her right there, then, then you can get your full combo down on her. You can let Lucian get pretty much free damage onto her. But we alter really late, so by that time Lucian's already dead, and then... It ends up being bad because we're just we're too late with our skills. So 
So we got we got to go earlier there, get the Vayne out of the fight as soon as possible. That's really that's really going to be our goal this entire game because Vayne is the biggest person on their team right now. She's died six times, but she still likely has the most gold. Eh. Garen has a bit more, but still, we're not gonna we're not gonna ult the Garen just because he's pretty tanky. Like he's gonna be building Black Cleaver into probably Dead Man's, into probably like Spirit Visage. So he's gonna be really tanky. So we don't really want to ult him. Where if we can E and ult onto Vayne and get get her really far down for, so that our team can clean her up, it'll be a lot better for us. What are we doing? The other thing is, if we're playing Lissandra, we can take TP a lot of the time and then do what we're doing now, just side lane pressure, but we, we can choose to take TP a lot of the time instead of Ignite because Ignite's only really going to be good when we have a ton of kill pressure in lane, which we didn't really go for really anything until we saw this TF go here, which was not in lane, obviously. So, Ignite's really, mostly for when we're just going to be going for the 1v1s, which, as Lissandra, it's not a ton. It's a lot, a lot of it, L Lissandra, what she does really is farm up for a couple items, and then she's really, really, really strong in team fights. It's a lot of what she's planning to do, but we can't be doing side lanes like this. Especially, so, we can go up to this point, clear this big wave, but this guy's pushing top, they're fighting mid, like, we're... We have no pressure on the map. Vayne could honestly be coming up to here now, and then we wouldn't be able to follow, and then it would be an uneven fight, right? But... We draw the Vayne in. Uh, okay. I don't know why we needed to do that, but... Yeah, you okay, it's fine. Push down the tower. We want to be getting Zonius pretty soon too. Because what Zonius does for you, I hope that's your next item is Zonius. Because A, it gives you the armor that you need for this team, right? Because it's Garen. Garen and, Garen and uh, Vayne are pretty fed. But what it does is you E, you R in, and you Zonius. And then you're, you're essentially a tank. Like obviously you're not absorbing damage, but you're distracting people with your with your R and your zone is on yourself for a really long time. Like you're you're pretty much just like a frontline Trindomir, kind of. Except you're not doing it you're not doing that much damage. You're you're a pseudo tank for sure when you're doing that. And then you can still survive because you have how much HP do you have? Like yeah, twenty one hundred HP and you're probably still building more with like Leandries, I'm assuming, after you build uh Zonias or after you build void stuff. I'd like to see you go towards the Zonias at this point, though. We're wasting, we're wasting some time just for not really that much of a, like we clear this wave, we should know pretty much exactly where the wave's gonna be because it's here and we should know that the waves, w when this is an even wave, it crashes right about here. So we should know that there's a second wave coming, but we walk and then we're like, oh wait, no, there's another wave. So that's just kind of like 10 seconds, just kind of wasted. Not, I don't have too much of an issue with it, but just keep in mind that the more time you waste, obviously, the, the less efficient you're gonna be. Here. Thank you. 
Yeah, we can't really fight him because we're the villain. So if we try to, if we just try to trade onto him, like he's doing so much damage with his E right now to us, and then his ult would honestly almost kill us right now. It just does so much damage when we're, when we're the villain. But he killed, the, he killed the singe, which is fine. And then our team gets kind of baited in too. We just can't really fight him. We we get the tower, and then we kind of just have to back off. Like we get the tower, and like we we look like we're posturing to take another tower, but really. They're all up right now, except for the Alistar, and then this Garen, you're not really killing him. Like, he kind of just has too much, too much health, I don't, I don't know why he battled him, that's weird. Yeah, we're sticking around just a little bit too long. We could have gotten out of that without getting, without losing anything, but now, now they have Baron if they want it. They have Vayne pressuring bot. If they wanted to right now, they could just go take Baron. I don't know why they don't. Okay. I'm amazed no one on their team's bot QSS, but that's... So we finished Leandri's. Like I said, I think I would have preferred Azonia's. It's, it's less damage, obviously, but it gives us a lot more team fight presence than, uh, than Leandri's is, is going to give us. Why not keep pushing top? This is fine, but if this doesn't work out, it's really bad for us. Where if we push top and put and kept pushing it, we could have gotten a tower, and that's that's consistent, right? So what I try to preach is consistency, right? Where this play doesn't necessarily always work out. Maybe sometimes they get out, but where pushing this lane and getting this tower, it's pretty consistently going to work out for us. Like 95% of the time, you're going to get this tower, and that's a nice gold, gold, gold boost for your team. And then we keep fighting, we're chasing Garen now, we died. So this is kind of what I'm talking about, like, the more and more you stick around, the less consistent it is. Like, the more, the more, there's, like, there's so many things that can go wrong. Like, cool, you, 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 you go there and then you're, you're chasing the Alistair now. So what happens if you chase the Alistair? Oh, maybe you walk into... Maybe you walk into a Garen, right? Or maybe TF come. TF, like the longer you chase this, the, the more, the, like the worse it becomes. So you trade Alistair for you there, pretty much. And then this guy's doing a ton of damage. TF's up pretty soon. He's gonna be he's gonna be up pretty soon, and he's gonna be in ult range, right? So the longer we do things like this, the more the more risky it becomes. I don't know what this TF's doing, but cool. It's just, it's just inconsistent is the only issue I have with it, where pushing this top wave and getting this top tower, it's just very, very consistent. And you'll, you'll get it every single time, and you'll get that nice gold boost for your team every single time. And that's honestly one of the reasons why we run TP, is that so we can put pressure top lane, because we have a ton of wave clear, we can get onto the tower pretty quickly, and we don't do insignificant damage to towers as AP mids. Like, obviously, part of our AP gets applied to tower damage, so... So yeah, that's, I, I'd prefer to see you run TP. I'd prefer to see you try pushing side lanes a little bit more, but TP into fights as soon as they start breaking out and then be the presence that you want to be. But if you are straight just grouping up for team fights 5v5 every single time, I would say get a Zonia's. You'll survive a lot longer. You'll be doing a lot more work inside the team fights and you're just gonna do, you're just gonna do a lot more with the Zonia's than you will with the Andres. The Andres is fine for sure, but it just means that our zone is, is going to be way too late, so maybe we could go like Roa into Leandri's or Roa into Zonia's. Instead, like just take out the Proto Belt pretty much, and I think we're pretty good. Like, Proto Belt's fine, but I think we'd prefer Zonia's rather than the Proto Belt. And then Void Staff's obviously fine, I've got no issues with the Void Staff, but I'd say Roa into Zonia's or Roa into Leandri's into Zonia's into Void Staff. 
either either or depending on the game. Nice pick. That's what wards do. I don't know. I don't know who put this ward down. It was probably Jana. Right here. But this is a perfect demonstration of what wards do for you. Because this guy's dumb. He doesn't have his team to back him up, and he's walking into your jungle to take your raptors for some reason. He's really, really, really dumb. But wards spot opportunities like this. So if we throw out all of our wards, where we've I don't know how many wards. I can't see your OPGG, so I don't know how many pink wards you're buying, but it looks to be none. So say we had a pink ward here, say we put a pink ward here, say we put pink wards here, here, here. Wards catch enemy mistakes, and it, it, it lets us capitalize. Where if we don't have a ward on here, right, what happens? We don't have this ward, so we don't see this person, right? We go up here, we're farming here. We don't see this person, so we're still probably going up to farm there. We're probably still heading up there. And he comes and takes these raptors and doesn't get punished for it, right? That's probably what happens if we don't have that ward. But the more wards we have like this, the more vision we have on the map, the more we can capitalize on stupid mistakes like this. And 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 now you're four v five on the map for forty five seconds. You can do whatever you want, pretty much. Oh, this this guy's gonna make a stupid play like this. Oh, we can go, we can go, we can go fight them in a four v five. Is it the best 4v5? Probably not, because you're kind of... You're kind of just caught between a weird place. I don't know why you're... I don't know why you're like that. I think you can be fine playing a bit more forward. We have a ton of HP. We're, we're almost like... We're 3k HP. We're probably as tanky as the Vi, to be honest. Yeah. I don't know why we're letting the Alistair take us out of the fight. Kill the Baron, peel towards, or kill the Garen and peel towards Baron. Yeah, no, you're taking way too long to kill the Baron. I, the Garen, not the Baron. I'm just not sure what you're doing in these team fights. Like you're, you're hesitating so much. You're, you're not confident at all in what you're doing, and, and it really, really shows. Like this whole team fight is essentially a four v four, because you're just not really doing anything. Like you, you picked you picked him. Cool. That, that was really 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 good. But it seems with on our alt we're just playing so we're playing so passive. Like we can go onto this guy and be fine, but we're not. We have our E up. We can go onto the vein and be fine. I think part of it is we don't have Zonia, so maybe we're less confident without the Zonia. I'm really not sure why we're so passive though. Like we like we should be throwing Qs pretty much 24/7 in this fight. And then we E over the wall. I, I'm just not sure. And then this whole fight here, this could have gone really well, but like, cool, we kill, we kill him, we kill him, and then the Garen comes onto us, and we're just kind of like really scared of the Garen for some reason. Like we're over here, we're not doing anything, we're not doing anything. Meanwhile, this this is happening here. We could have been zoning TF out of the fight. Like I'm just, it's kind of weird how we're playing. And then we go over here because we're scared of the van. Like it's really weird how we're just not doing anything. Okay, kill the TF again because he's interesting decision. But we, but then we lose probably two or three inhibs off of this. Probably two. Yeah. We're just we're too passive in the team fights. We're playing we're playing the team fights way too passively. We have to be a lot more confident in what we're doing in team fights because if we're not, they're gonna go poorly. unfortunate yeah play play with more confidence play play your champions more play play fewer champions and play them with more confidence you'll if you play a lot more aggressive you'll be 
short term, you'll probably play worse. You'll probably give more kills. You'll probably do a lot, a lot less. But long term, you'll understand your champion limits a lot more, and you'll be able to, you'll be able to recognize what you can actually do with your champion a lot more. Where if you're playing team fights super passively, you're gonna just keep playing team fights super passively and keep making the same mistakes. So that's that's what I'd tell you is just play play with more confidence.